Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. And let's see what these markets have brought to us on uh, this Tuesday morning, the 27th. Let's take a quick look at corn. This corn table brought to us by Bar Chart, holding the gains of overnight, up six and three quarter cents still at 5.56 and a half in that September contract. Six and three quarter cents higher in December new crop at 5.53 and a half. Jumping over to the soybeans to see if they've kept on kept their gains. I think they have, and yes, they, they have 16 and a half cents higher in August, 14.29 and a quarter. And we've got uh, 15 and three quarter cents higher in the SEP at 13.78. And no, no, uh, Novi new crop up 15 and three quarters at 13.73 and a half. But just to note, that's about 14 cents off of the highs. So uh, kind of backing off a little bit there. Let's see Chicago wheat. Chicago wheat up uh, about five and a half cents across the board. Five and a half cents higher in September at 6.82 and a half. December up five and three quarters at 6.92 and a half. Uh, 6.92 and a half, and then we've got about a seven cents to uh, from the D size of 6.99 and a half. So again, those have backed off. Those prices have backed off from earlier real estate gains. How about the hard red wheat? Kansas City up double digits a dime in the front. September up 10 cents at 6.49. December up nine cents, nine cents at 6.59 and a half. Moving on to spring wheat, Minneapolis. What do we have in Minneapolis? Here we go. Decent gains. 15 and a half cents higher, 894 and a quarter, 15 and three quarter, and that's in SEP. The Dece is 15 and three quarter cents higher, 883. Uh, but 883 is a, still about two and a half cents off the highs in Dece, so still kind of holding in there. Why don't we go back to Chris Swift from Swift Trading? Chris, um, what do you think about uh, these these grain markets? Well, I like them. I'm liking the, the watching the bean oil and the beans because the beans right now have been the story has been the bean oil behind them, and we know that the canola crop in the uh, Canadian Prairie Plains there have been impacted by the same drought weather as what our Minneapolis spring wheat has been. So that's where a lot of the bean strength I think is coming from is not necessarily the impact of the beans itself, but the combination of the canola crop and the soybeans in that northwest quadrant there of the uh, Corn Belt. So uh, given what we saw as far as crop conditions and the weather report here, what's your feeling on these things maybe in the short term, 10, 5 to 10 days out? You know, I think they're still going to come up with a great crop. The majority of the crop is in good shape. It's, again, I hate to keep preaching on this, but the northwestern quadrant is where the drought is, and nobody knows what the severity of that impact is. So I'm kind of leaving a little bit of wiggle room in my analysis to say that that, that could be a pretty dramatic decline and, and take the yields from 179 maybe down to 178 or 177. I think it could be that dramatic, but it's probably only going to be in those drought-related areas. And you know what, Chris, if uh, if it is that dramatic, well, you know what, even if it's not, I mean, this is still going to give us a lot to talk about for the next, I don't know, say 12 to 24 months, because these ratios and these numbers are just not giving us a lot of room for error. So stay right there. We'll be back with Chris Swift after these messages to talk about those protein markets. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shelley, uh, and I am the cow guy, which I love as the segue to jump in and talk about these protein markets, see how live cattle have opened up here, knowing what we do about those grain markets, live cattle, just kind of eking out a little bit of a gain here, 22 cents higher in that August contract at 123.67. October right behind it, 42 cents higher at 129.62. How are feeders handling the higher inputs? Eh, a little easier, not bad actually, 35 cents lower in that August contract at 161, spot 85. In September, down 25 cents, at 164 spot 57. Lean hogs, how we got lean hogs this morning? Pretty quiet, but eking out a little bit of a gain in the fronts. August up 15 cents to 107.55. October up 15 cents to 93.25. Uh, but we're kind of either side of unchanged across the board there. So a mixed market in lean hogs, nothing really doing. The volumes are pretty thin. Uh, having said that, for some excitement, we brought back in Chris Swift from Swift Trading. Uh, Chris, uh, give us your, your opinion on how we've opened this market up and those proteins and where you think the day is going to take us. Well, unfortunately, I may not be as excited about it as what you may think I am. Mean, there's really not a great deal to, to take place. We're watching the consumer very carefully to watch how they're shifting in their discretionary spending habits, and we know that the inflation has had an impact on it, but we're still seeing beef movement to be very good. 
Um, I think the fat cattle market is is more likely than not as we're making new contract highs up here today and some of the back ends of it and the feeders. What we're really not seeing is any kind of great relief to the cattle producer out there with the margins on it, the cattle feeder, let me rephrase that, to the cattle feeder. Um, Feeder cattle were up immensely yesterday. The corn market was off a little bit. Now feeders are practically unchanged on the day, and corn's up sharply. So we're not giving them much reprieve in their input costs. What do you think the biggest risk is for those uh, cattle markets? I think it's the consumer. I really do. I think if if somehow the administration comes in and and does something, uh, another mandate with the mask or something that is unpleasing to the public that would make them, again, shift in their discretionary spending habits, that's what I'm watching for the most. Well, right now we've got consumer confidence still at pretty high levels, so we've got some things going our way here. But you're right. With these headlines, that drip, 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 that can be kind of a water torture on on the consumer, and that can slow things down. That was a great answer. Thank you very much. That's Chris Swift from Swift Trading. This is my opportunity to give it back over to Tammy.